guys, it's Mignon from Bobby and Bambi's DIY. Please excuse the hot mess express that's going on here. Welcome back, and if you're new here, I make recipes for dogs and dog bakery business videos. In my last video, I announced I'll be uploading mini episodes in the month of August while I work on my new e-course, How to Start a Dog Bakery Business. I will be announcing the pre-launch dates very soon. In today's video, I want to discuss a topic I've been receiving a lot of questions about, and that topic is production and where it's accepted to produce dog treats if you're not ready to lease a storefront or bakery. Businesses that are just starting out will usually operate out of a shared commercial kitchen facility or their home kitchen. Every state has different regulations, so the only way you will truly know is to call your state's Department of Agriculture. With that being said, if you plan on operating out of your home kitchen, please contact your state's Department of Agriculture and ask if it is even acceptable to operate out of your home kitchen. I highly advise you to check on this before you start your dog treat business. Some states are really strict like California where I'm from. I actually took some time and researched each state's regulations and found that some are not so strict and will allow you to operate out of your home with or without a home inspection. Yes, I know there are a ton of small pet treat companies operating out of their homes where they're not supposed to, but if you want peace of mind, it's better to just double check and be compliant with your state, especially if you decide to take the course. If you're unable to produce out of your home kitchen, don't worry, all hope is not lost. You can operate out of a shared commercial kitchen facility. Shared commercial kitchen facilities have gained so much popularity over the past few years. They're also called cloud kitchens, incubator kitchens, or commissary kitchens. I hope I'm saying that or pronouncing that correctly. You can Google shared commercial kitchens to see if there are any in your area. When you're accepted into a commercial kitchen, you usually fill out an application, submit a deposit, get general liability insurance and you also need to submit a serve safe food handler certificate. Each commercial kitchen will have their own guidelines and procedures and will walk you through it. Now here are some pros and cons of working in a shared commercial kitchen facility. Let's start with the pros. Number one, there is no long-term lease you're locked into, which is awesome because when you're first starting out, locking into a five to 10 year lease can be daunting and scary. Operating out of a commercial kitchen facility is great because you can see if you even like running a dog bakery business. Every commercial kitchen is different. Some will have a minimum of a three month commitment or no commitment at all. Two, you'll be working in a commercially health department licensed facility, making it easy for you to stay compliant you will never ever have to worry about your facility getting shut down out of nowhere by a health inspector. Three, you'll have access to commercial grade kitchen equipment to help you grow and work efficiently. I'm telling you, commercial equipment will change your life and business. For example, a commercial convection oven, oh, it's so wonderful. I was able to bake 700 to 800 cookies in an hour versus maybe in your home kitchen, you could maybe do 30 to 40 in 45 minutes. That's crazy. The facility I worked in also had a dough sheeter and that changed my life. No more manually rolling and visits to the chiropractor every week for my neck and shoulder. Another bonus is that you don't have to worry about equipment maintenance. So if anything breaks down, you don't have to worry about it. Number four, you also don't have to worry about additional bills like electricity, trash, pest control, and all the other things you would have to worry about if you owned your own space. Five, you get to work alongside other food producers, chefs, caterers, etc. I was so lucky because I was part of an amazing community. We helped each other out and supported one another, especially when we were working until like 3 or 4 a.m. It's so great to have people around you that are doing the same thing that you're doing. Number six, it's a great place to start before you invest in your own bakery. It's a great place to learn about equipment, process, how much things cost like appliances. It's also a great place to see if you even like baking and running a food Food business. Seven, flexible hours. Depending on the commercial kitchen, you can schedule hours when you want to work or you can let the kitchen manager know the set days and hours you want to work. The commercial kitchen I was operating out of was great because our facility was open 24 seven and you could just go onto the online portal and schedule the hours that you wanted. Some commercial kitchens will have you block off certain days and times. For example, say you want to work every Tuesdays from 8 a.m. to 4. Now for the cons. 
Number one, it can get very expensive. I toured about four commercial kitchens in my area and worked out of two. The first commercial kitchen's rate was a block of four hours for $100 a week. The second was $30 an hour plus a facility fee, which ended up being about $32.50 an hour. So you can see these hours can add up really, really fast. Another thing to consider is storage. If you need to store your ingredients and supplies at the facility, there's a monthly fee for storage. There are different storage fees for dry, refrigerator, freezer, and equipment storage. I remember I had two speed bags to store at the kitchen and it was about $75 each a month. As you grow and schedule more hours, you can always negotiate your monthly rates. Two, during high peak times like ho the holiday season, you may not be able to get the hours you need. It's best to communicate with your kitchen manager in advance and ask if you can prepay in advance for hours during peak times and holidays, especially during Christmas. Three, share a kitchen means messy people. Sometimes other food producers can be messy and inconsiderate. I have so many crazy stories, but I won't get into them all now, but I will share one. I remember one time I was scheduled after a company and when I walked into my kitchen, there was raw chicken pieces and juice and chicken blood all over a wood work surface. Um, hello salmonella. It took about 40 minutes to clean it up and guess what? I lost 40 minutes and I couldn't go overtime because somebody was coming in right after me. So things like that could happen. If you don't have shared commercial kitchen facilities in your area, you can also reach out to local bakeries to see if they will rent out their kitchen during odd hours. I want to take the time to apologize for incorrect information in my how to start a dog bakery video. I mentioned to you guys you may be able to produce in your home kitchen under the cottage food law or license. This may not be true anymore. When I first started my dog bakery, the cottage food license had just become available, but dog treats weren't accepted under the cottage food laws, which was fine with me because from what I remember, there was an earnings cap and you couldn't ship products in the mail. So I went straight into the commercial kitchen facility. I personally did not operate under a cottage food license but a couple years into my business I met people at pet shows and they told me they were operating under the cottage food license and was told human grade baked products was a loophole in one of the categories so they were able to get a license. So I thought that was that and then recently someone reached out to me to let me know that the cottage food license was not open to dog treats anymore specifically in California. I'm not sure if this applies to all 50 states but I am so sorry for the confusion and misinformation. Totally should have double checked this before I made this video. But again, contact your state's Department of Agriculture to see if you're able to work out of your home. If you plan on baking out of your home but your state won't let you, don't give up. Where there's a will, there's always a way. Everything is figure outable. Wait, did I just make that word up? Everything is figure outable. If you let every roadblock stop you from moving forward, you will never achieve your goals. That's why most businesses fail during their first year of business. Every roadblock you overcome makes you stronger. Well, that's all for today. I hope this information was helpful in helping you decide where to produce and operate your dog treat business. Stay tuned for the How to Start a Dog Bakery e-course pre-launch date. The pre-launch will have special pricing, so make sure you're signed up on the email list. You can also follow me along at Dog Bakery Academy or Bobby and Bambi's Dog Bakery on Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the bell for notifications so you know when the video is uploaded. Thank you so much for watching, dream big, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye friends!